This episode is powered by Tourbox. I've been looking for a tool that would elevate my experience in editing and color grading, and I have my shortcuts on my keyboard in every program that I use. And there's really nothing wrong with a keyboard and mouse, but elevating my experience with the Tourbox Elite Plus ignited something within me to enjoy editing again. Not necessarily because it is a new gadget in my toolkit, but because it has given me precision and efficiency that a keyboard and mouse don't really have. So in this video, we'll cover why this is the best editing console for DaVinci Resolve, three new features, and how I set it up to turbocharge my editing workflow. First is the hover adjust, where you hover over a setting and you can precisely change the value of your looks with the dials and the wheels. Second is the automatic workspace recognition, where you have specific presets for all the pages in DaVinci Resolve. And third is the shadow playback for switching your playback speed on demand with the tour box. Now, what exactly is this thing? The Tourbox Elite Plus is a compact controller made specifically for creative editing. Now, this is the perfect tool for editing and color grading DaVinci Resolve. And most macro controllers are just usually designed for one thing, either editing or color grading, but never for both. This seamlessly and effortlessly does both. So every control and shortcut you need is within this compact editing controller. Now, this isn't just for DaVinci Resolve. It also works for other softwares like Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and not only that, it seamlessly works with photo editing and music production software as well, making it an all around tool if you're a multifaceted creative. Now, I'm sure most creators or even filmmakers jump between photo and video editing software since we most likely handle the graphics as well. So this controller is perfect to keep up with all your shortcuts and tools in the same place. Now, if you ask me, Victor, how is the overall experience and application in your editing software? And how is the learning curve and the real life application of this? Now, I've been using this for a month now and I've edited about 25 videos, both for short form and long form for my clients and for my YouTube videos. And to be honest, it didn't really take me long to get used to it. I didn't really have to tinker with it much because the presets were already straightforward and there's a general HUD and the D-pad overlay to help you with your buttons. About maybe two or three videos, I was able to quickly customize it to all the tools that I use in DaVinci Resolve, making everything accessible in one controller. Now, what really stood out to me was the experience in editing and color grading. Like I said, in the beginning, it has given me the spark to create more, alongside with the motivation and precision that I need to dial in the looks for a scene. Now, with a mouse, it always feels like I'm guessing if the value has changed because DaVinci Resolve values use decimals that you don't see until they round up. But with the Tourbox Elite Plus, there's haptic feedback, so you know exactly how many clicks you've made. So your adjustments are more precise. This is something I've really never had with just a keyboard and mouse. What separates the Tourbox Elite Plus from other macro controllers is the new hover adjust feature. The way it works is so simple. You just hover your cursor over what you want to change and then adjust using the knobs or dials of the tour box. And you basically don't need to learn new shortcuts or set up any specific dials for anything. This helps you keep your hands on the controller and mouse without extra buttons or combinations. You just hover and adjust what you need precisely. Let's go over the primaries. You basically just hover over each primary, then use the wheels to move up and down the axis you're on and use the knob to adjust which color hue you want. For the curves, it's pretty straightforward as well. Hover over where you want to add or adjust control points. Use the knob for left and right adjustments and the slider wheel for up and down adjustments. The hover adjust feature applies to most settings you'll need in the color page. Again, giving you to precision instead of eyeballing with a mouse. And recently, they've also added two new features to make everything seamless with the tour box. Now it has a workspace recognition in DaVinci Resolve. This basically means that the tour box automatically switches to dedicated presets in each workspace 
So all the tools and shortcuts you need from the edit page will automatically load when you are on the edit page. And let's just say you go to another space like the color page, then it automatically loads up your settings specifically for the color tab. And the same goes to all the other pages in DaVinci Resolve. This makes it easy so you don't have to cram everything into one setup or preset. Now you have loads of opportunity making each workspace workflow more efficient. There's another new feature they added. It's called the shuttle playback. This is a handy feature to put on a dial or a knob because it allows you to switch playback speed on demand. It's visually on your screen as well. So you can also use your mouse to drag the playback speed. This is actually genius because it makes the playback more efficient when you're cutting a video. So let's just say you are doing a long interview or a talking head and you put it on times two, it basically cuts your editing time in half. And also when I'm done editing a video, I usually watch the entire thing. So if there's any mistake, I can catch it before exporting. If you want to know how I set up mine, here's everything that I've changed based on my most used tools in DaVinci Resolve. The dials and the wheels are all the same, but I've added the press functions. For the knob press, I added a full screen function. This way I can scrub through my footage and enable full screen in one knob. For the dial press, I've set it to add marker for quick markings and it's with a dial so it's slightly out of the way and I won't accidentally add a marker when I'm editing. I've set the side button for the edit page and the top button to color mode so I can quickly toggle between the two if needed. I also set up a double tap on the top button for delivery so I can export my videos. I've moved the start pause playback to the tall button because it resembles the space bar which is usually the start pause for most editing softwares. My thumb naturally rests on the tall button similar to how it rests on the space bar when I'm editing, so it helps with my muscle memory being the same. The short button is set to split clip so I can quickly cut something when needed. I've actually deleted the double taps on the tall and short buttons so I don't accidentally do something when I'm hitting these two buttons fast. The side button works as my control command button and these combinations allow me to mimic copy paste, control C and control V naturally so my muscle memory doesn't have to change. So the side plus tall button equals copy, the side plus the short button equals paste, and then side plus top is paste attribute, which is helpful for copying, sizing, or other things you want from clip to clip. I've set the double tap side button for delete, so it's still somewhat out of the way, but still accessible when I need it. This way I don't accidentally press delete when I'm deep into editing. Next is the tour button. I've set this to save the project file and a quick tip or reminder, always enable auto save, but this is just a good way to quickly do a manual save. The C1 and C2 buttons are simply just undo and redo. So it's quick access, still out of the way if we need it. Then I set up the D-pad to my most used tools, which is trimming left and right, and then ripple delete for the down button. And for the up button, it's to add a serial node for color grading. Now, I also set the side button plus D-pad up to add a parallel node. Lastly, I set the side button plus D-pad left for mark in, and then side plus D-pad right for mark out for quick access. And the rest of the buttons and combinations are empty, but I'm sure I'll add more things the more I edit with the Toolbox Elite Plus. So far, all the tools that I need are mapped out for efficiency when I edit and color grade. So my biggest question when I got this unit, and maybe for you as well, is that, is the Toolbox worth it? Well, if you're like me and you want to make your workflow smoother and much more enjoyable, I think the Toolbox is definitely worth it. I even bring it when I fly out to edit on my laptop. It's compact enough wherever I go that I can have an efficient editing and color grading session. Now, imagine traveling with the Blackmagic grading panel. That's huge compared to this guy. 
The Toolbox comes in different trims, starting from around 95 US dollars all the way up to 297 US dollars, which is the model I have here. And if you need more info, I have linked their website down below. Honestly, this is one of the best additions to my creative setup recently. I'm really happy with the Toolbox Elite Plus because again, it allows me to be both precise and efficient with editing and color grading. Now, if you have any questions about the Toolbox Elite Plus, my setup or my workflow, let me know in the comments down below. But until then, I will see you in the next video. Peace.